Hi everyone, welcome to Storytime with Caleb. I am wearing a hat today because I just woke up and I look like a freak bag. My hair is a disaster. But this video is gonna be a little bit special because we're gonna be talking about some finances. Yay. So we're gonna talk about all my incomes for software engineering or software development jobs. And I don't typically do this kind of content, but if you're really interested in the financial aspect of life, <laughs> my life specifically, then I would encourage you to check out this brand new channel I started called Currency. With, it's like currency, but with a Y, because my last name. <laughs> okay, you have to have at least 1,000 subscribers to even monetize and like 240,000 minutes of watch time. So right now it's just a volunteer project, but that would really, really, really help me out if you went and subscribed and checked out some of my videos there. So if you're interested in personal finances, investing, or experimental projects like Bitcoin, we talk about all of those over there on that channel so you can get a lot more of this kind of stuff. Specifically tied to this video, I'm gonna do a video on some of the top jobs you can get that you can do online to make a lot of money. As many of you might know, software development is quite the lucrative field, or at least it can be if you do it right. Not everybody in software development is making quadrillions of dollars, but average salaries are like six figures. So it is it is a very lucrative field, I just said that. So first thing, I've never had one of the super extremely high software development salaries. You hear of people getting offers 200,000, 240,000, 200, even more thousand. And I think the first thing you should consider is where you are located. Now, if you are a remote worker, meaning you just work from home, then you have a lot more options because you can work at any of these companies in the United States or in the world, wherever you are. And this is helpful for options, but it is also more competitive because everyone who works remote can compete for these positions. And often the pay is going to be less because you're not in Silicon Valley or New York City or some of these really expensive cities. So just to kind of put this whole living thing in perspective, Let's just take a look at some cost of living calculators online. And of course, these are just estimates, but basically you can say where you're from and then compare that to a different city. So as an example, let's use Columbus and let's say we're comparing this to San Francisco. And we'll just go with the annual income of 50,000. And this suggests that your salary would become 168,000 in San Francisco. What? So now all of a sudden, all these people making like fat stacks of cash doesn't really seem like a whole lot. I think that was more of an income comparison. So let's do more of a cost of living. And in this situation, you need about 8,000 to maintain the same level of living as you would 4,000 in Columbus. So it's like a double in this estimate. So a $240,000 salary may only equate to like 120,000 in a city such as Columbus. Like I used to get discouraged or jealous of these people that seem to have such good career success. But in reality, it all came down to where I live because I've only been to San Francisco one time and it wasn't the greatest experience of my life. Anyways, let's go through the jobs I've had and how much money I actually made from them. Um, now, I'm not gonna go through all the jobs I've ever had, mainly just the, the technical ones. Um, but I did leave my first minimum wage job and got a, a software development job and I was getting paid $18 an hour. And to me at the time, this was like, oh my gosh, how am I even gonna handle this much money? Like I'm gonna have to buy sports cars just to store my cash in them because this was like over twice what I was used to earning at my other job. So even though I wasn't super interested in taking a job at the time, I just thought that this was such a great financial opportunity. And that really set the, the stage for the rest of my life essentially because that, that started my development career. Now we'll get into how I got these jobs and how all that stuff worked out probably in another video sometime. But for now, let's just focus on the income. I did that job part-time for a while and this was as a self-employed person. So the $18 didn't quite add up to $18 at a W-2 position uh, just because there's self-employment tax etc. I'm not like a tax expert or anything. When you work at a company as an employee, they end up paying some of this stuff that if you're not an employee and you're self-employed, you have to pay on your own. Then I ended up deciding to go to university. Does my hair look still look stupid? Yep, still looks stupid. 
and I applied for an internship and I told them, hey, I make $18 an hour. I would like to make more, uh, which is just like a crazy thought to think you can get an internship and request to make like $18 an hour, especially when some people get internships in, in other fields and they don't get anything per hour. They make zero. They said, we can't do 18, but the, the absolute max we can do is 17. And I was like, oh yeah, because I thought it was going to be like 10 or something, but um, you never, it never hurts to ask. So I asked for 18 and they said 17. At this point, it's still a part-time position, internship, I go to school, but that $17 an hour really helped out for covering most of uh, my cost of living. Now, this position was a great position to start uh, as it was in person. So this was my first in-person software development job and that gave me a lot of experience. But overall, I think I decided I prefer the more remote work, more flexible tasks, etc. So I ended up leaving this position and going a little while without a position. So I went like six months just in school, maybe a little bit shorter, uh, and I started applying for other places. And I found another company, which was similar to the first position I had, where I would be able to work on a variety of tasks. And I got offered $30 an hour. Dang. Now I'm going to have to get a boat to store my sports cars on that have stacks of money inside of them because this was just beyond my comprehension. Coming from like a city where, you know, the typical work is factory work or like a grocery store, this was insane because 30 bucks an hour, if you do that full time, that comes out to be 60,000 a year. From this position, this was also a self-employed position. So similar to the first job I had, but it was good. I loved it. This was the first job that like I really felt like was fun. I enjoyed it. I felt challenged. I felt in charge. There's just a bunch of really good attributes in this job. Uh, for part of it anyways. <laughs> but then I decided to go for another position and this one was outside of software development. It was still in a technical industry and I was doing some technical stuff, but this was for 90,000 a year, so it was salaried. But the thing here is that this was an in-person position and to me like 90,000, I was like, oh my golly, how am I gonna, to organize so much money but what I didn't also realize was the cost of living of where I would have to move and just to really understand how things would change um, just the cost of moving and the cost of starting a new life essentially in a different state so it ended up not being as uh, good financially as I was expecting so I ended up leaving that position which that was salaried 90,000 a year and I took a position that was salaried for 75,000 a year with plans to move up to 100,000 after my first year. So 75,000 a year turns to be about $37.5 an hour if you're working 40 hours a week. And this was also a salaried position, so it was a little bit better than being self-employed. Although I left a higher paying position, this was a better step in my career because I was back into the software engineering, software development career path. And believe it or not, this was actually a remote position, which freed me to move anywhere, which could have been a, an area with a lower cost of living. So those $37.5 an hour could end up doing a whole lot more. So I think this job was probably the most lucrative of all the different jobs I've had. I was really excited about that, especially with serious talk of, of moving that up to 100,000 after the first year. I ended up not staying there a year, so I don't know how that would have turned out, but I do think there was really high probability that that would have happened, mainly because when I joined, they were paying a software team like outsourcing to this team and they were paying them a ton of money. So paying me 100,000 seemed like really good savings for the company if I could maintain the project and move it along. So from this job is when I really decided, hey, I don't want to work in the software industry in the same way that I have up until now. So I left and I have since been doing this YouTube stuff full time 
and that's that's uh, pretty much it. It just goes downhill from there. Now, if I were to go back in, here's what I would do. Obviously, I want to make a good amount of money, but I don't think I would go in just taking the absolute highest because there is a cost to getting the highest paying job. Like I mentioned, I did work a higher paying job, but it was in a little bit in the wrong industry for me and it required me to move and it required a lot of my time and energy and effort. The job that I ended with, the software development job that paid like 75 a year, this was more freeing. Um, I didn't have to drive through traffic or any of this crazy stuff. So that money became much more valuable to me. So it's not always about total income or total compensation, but also the freedoms you get and the, the amount you like the job. Yeah, I never made six figures. Am I a failure? Probably. I think this YouTube thing has worked out best for me and this is ultimately what I've wanted to do since like the beginning. So I think everything worked out just fine. Now, if you wanna know more ways to make money online and different experimental financial stuff I'm doing, please check out my other channel, Currency, spelled with a Y. I think you'll really enjoy that. And be sure to go subscribe because I'm really trying to get to 1,000 as fast as humanly possible. Ideally by like the end of March, but we'll see. Thank you guys and be sure to subscribe.